So today we're going to talk about dual switching. Uh, there's a few different ways we can do it. So I've got a few diagrams behind me and we'll explain just the different ways you can do it. So we'll start, there's probably like two ways that you can really do it in my personal opinion, uh, which is the top two. The third way, it's more not really an uh, automotive industry way of doing it. It's more for houses. Uh, and then the fourth way, I personally don't um, call that dual switching, just the way it works, but we can get into that once we actually get to that one. So we'll start with number one. For me, it's the one that I learned how to actually dual, um, do dual switching on. And then it's probably the one that I did for probably the first five or six years of my career. And then as earth moving, because that's my background, started to go into a bit more advanced, then that's where we moved to the second option there. But the first one's probably pretty simple and it's probably like the easiest one and then it gets a bit more involved. So how it's gonna work is you're obviously gonna have two switches that are gonna be able to turn on and off this one load. So to be able to achieve that, you're gonna need a switch that has three terminals on it. It's gonna have a common switch and then normally close and normally open. So how, what that actually means is the common, it will always have contact with either normally open or the normally closed connection. So it will only ever have connection with one of them at a time, unless obviously it's faulty, but that's how you know that's your common. And then you'll have obviously the normally closed and normally open. So what normally closed and normally open means is when the switch is in the unoperated state or the off state, the common is connected to the normally closed. And then when it's operated, um, it will then be in the, it will then collect it'll then connect to the normally open one and then that's when power will go through to that so you just need two of those switches there and then obviously your light or your output so it could be a relay horn whatever you want it to be it doesn't really matter just whatever your output is and then you'll have your power in so what you'll do is you just connect up to your positive wire whether that's the actual battery or ignition whatever it doesn't matter go through your fuse and then you're going to connect to your common on your switch so then what happened, this switch is currently not operated, so it's connected to the normally closed. So power will then come through from the common to the normally closed connection. And then what we do is we run two cables that just connect the normally open of each switch and the normally closed of each switch. He's called those strappers, and that's all it does. They'll just connect the two switches to each other. So we then have power come from common, go down to normally closed, all the way to normally closed on the other one. Because this one is also unoperated, It'll then connect to the common and then it'll go out to your light. Your light now works. To turn that light off, all you've got to do is you just hit this and now it's on. So now it'll then go up to the normally open state and now power is coming from the battery through the normally closed all the way to normally closed here. But because you've switched this up and it's now normally open, there's no power that can get through the common, can't get to your output, there's no power. And then what you can do to turn it back on, you can either turn this one back and then it'll go back to normally closed and it'll go through. Or what you can do, because this one is now currently sitting in normally open, you come back to your first switch, turn that up to normally open. Now power is going to come through from common to normally open, all the way to normally open here. And because we're still connected, goes to common and then to your output. So that's probably the simplest way uh, to do your dual switching. Then we've got our second one here. So same concept, you're just going to have multiple switches that will then just power to your output. The only difference now is we're just gonna have to chuck in a um, latching relay here. So the downside to this one is it is more expensive. You're either gonna have no relay here depending on the size of the load, or you can just have a normal relay here where for this one, you need a latching relay. They're probably about three or four times the price of a normal relay. So it's just a bit more expensive to do, but the, the reason that you go to this one is because this can only do two switches. You never have more, more than two if you do it this way because if you wanted to chuck another one of these in, you've only got three terminals. There's just no way you can connect them to each other. So that's when we now go to this option here. So same concept, gonna have power come through your fuse and then what it's gonna do is, it's gonna go to each one of these switches now. So these are momentary switches so how that'll work is you'll just hit the switch, it will then push those contacts together, and now it'll just mean that power can go from here over to this one. They all work the exact same. And then as soon as you actually get rid of that switch, like you release it, it'll then open back up, you'll lose power again. So 
you'll just connect them all in parallel with each other. So each single one needs power and you can have as many switches as you want. It can be two switches, three, it can be 10, it doesn't matter, however many you want. And then you do the same on the outside, on the output of it. So they're all just connected in parallel. So what will happen is power will then come through here because none of these are switched. Uh, currently, there's no power going through any of them. As soon as you switch any one of them on, it'll then power will go through, it'll then come up and it'll come all the way to your relay. So this is why we need a latching relay now because as soon as you release that, you'll then lose power and this relay will then click out. So you need a special relay that whenever you give it power, it'll open the contacts or close the contacts every time you do it. So this is why we need the latching one. So you'll have power come through here. It'll then activate the coil of the relay as per any normal relay. And then what will happen is you'll have power on your common of the relay 30. And then you just have the output 87 going to same thing, whatever you want it to be a light, whatever, it doesn't matter. So as soon as power goes there, it'll activate that. It just brings the internal connection over and then it just joins 30 to 87 and then power goes out. And then once you release that, those contacts stay latched to each other. That's why it's called a latching relay. And then to be able to turn that light off, and it's the same thing, he's gonna hit that, power will then go, it'll activate that relay and then it'll open the contact. And then it just keeps going the same way. So anytime you wanna turn power on or off, you just hit that switch. It'll send power to that relay for a split second, either open or close those contacts, allowing either power to go to this output or away from it. So they're really the two common ways in the automotive industry that you'll do dual switching. There is other ways you can do it, like the fourth way, but we'll get into that in a second. So now you come down to the third way. So this one's pretty much the exact same as the first one. The only thing is we've now got an extra switch in there. Now this is a intermediate switch. So this is why it's not really common on automotive. You don't really get intermediate switches for automotive applications. They're more of a house application. So it's exact same concept. The only thing now is in between your two strappers, we've just chucked an intermediate switch. And then you can have same thing, as many of these intermediate switches together as you want. It doesn't matter because they'll just switch in between themselves, always allowing power through. So same thing here. We're gonna have power come through. Our fuse goes to the common. We're now going to normally close on our switch. It's then gonna come down to our intermediate switch here. So now you can see on the intermediate switch, it, the way it switches. So the straight lines is how it is in say the normally unoperated state. And then the dotted lines is when you then hit that switch, they'll then flick. So what we get here is we get power come from here, straight through the switch here. And then it goes all the way to normally close on this switch, out to common, out to your light. So now if you want to turn power off to this light, it's the exact same thing. So you'll hit this one, it'll either go to normally open or you'll do the same on this one or on the intermediate switch, what you'll do is you'll hit that and then instead of it, this straight line staying like that, it will then go to the dotted line. So power will come from, from your fuse, through your common, through your normally closed, all the way to this terminal here. But instead of going straight through, because we've now switched it, it's now gonna go up to this line all the way to here and we're now seeing it normally open. But because this switch is still in the normally closed state, no power goes here. So then to be able to get power to that is the exact same thing. You can either hit this one, hit this one, hit this one, and it, all it does, it just chops and change which one of these strappers power goes on to. So that's the way you'll do it if you wanted to have multiple switches, just using an intermediate switch there instead of going to that latching relay situation. But they're not really a common switch in the automotive industry. That's why usually you only see these first two as your main ones. So now we go to the fourth way. So a lot of people do call this dual switching. I personally don't call it dual switching. For me, dual switching is you can turn uh, any output off by either one light or turn it on by either one, sorry, either one switch or turn it off by either switch. So this way you can't do that. The only way you can do that is with these three options here. This one, to be able to send power to this light or turn it off, you've got to use the switch that you use to turn it on and off. So what happens here is power will come from your battery, go through the fuse, 
and then same thing these ones are in parallel with each other so then you'll have power go to the common here power to the common there so now if we turn this one on there's only one contact on it just the normally open so now power goes from the common through to the normally open all the way to your output there so if you then hit this bottom one here it's going to do nothing for you because it's the exact same thing as the top one power comes from here to the common straight through the normally open back up to here to go to your output there so if you wanted to switch if you turn this one on and then you want to turn your light off now and you want to use this one it's impossible you can't do it you've got to turn the one off that you just turned on so that's why for me personally i don't call that dual switching i mean i guess technically it is because you do have dual switching ability but to me it's not really an option like if i want dual switching i want to be able to turn it on and off at any location i don't want to have to go back to the original one so I, for me personally it's not something that i would recommend uh it's one of the cheapest ways to do it but the downside is if you flip this one let's say this is your cab one and this is one back in your canopy you're parking up at night, you want to turn your rear lights on to see where you're parking, you're going to turn your rear lights on here, you're going to get out of the car, set up all your camp, now you want to turn them off, instead of being able to go to your canopy one where you're already set up there and turn it off, you can't, you've got to go all the way back to the cab, turn it off, so a lot of people probably don't think that's a big deal, me personally I just love convenience, so why would I want to walk all the way back to the cab to turn that light switch back off? when I can just do it from the canopy. So that's why for me, that's not an option. I wouldn't even consider it. And that's why on my personal car, I've gone for this one here, just because um, it is more expensive, unfortunately, but for me, it just gives you the most amount of convenience. I'm only gonna be running two switches at the moment, but I do wanna potentially put a third switch up in the sleeping location. And then if I was to do that, I have to go down this route. So that's why I thought, oh, well, I'll just set up with this one now. I could technically do it with this one here. I would use, need to use a relay because they're just drawing too much power and these switches couldn't handle it. But I just thought I just want to future proof it. I just want to allow it that if I ever do want to add extra switches in the future, I'm going to have the ability straight away. All I've got to do is send two wires to the closest switch to wherever I want to store my new switch. Just solder it onto each side of the switch. Job done and then we're good to go. Where if I set myself up with this one, it's gonna be a full rewire job and it's just not gonna be possible. So that's why I've opted for this one. But unfortunately, like I said, it is the more expensive option. That's why a lot of people don't really opt for it because these relays are quite expensive. And then if you're talking about having a left light, a, re a rear light, a right light, these relays add up pretty quick and get quite pricey. So you just gotta kind of weigh up really what option you want. If you are just ever going to go for just the two switch option, me personally, I think this is the best option to go for here. But yeah, if you wanted multiple switches, you want to go that one. You could go this option down here, but like I said before, that just doesn't personally work for myself, but that might work for you. So that is definitely a good option and it is one of the cheapest ones. You're not going to be requiring a more expensive switch that has two mechanisms, the normally open and normally closed two contacts in it. You're only going to need the one, so the switches themselves will be cheaper. And the wiring is also going to be a lot cheaper for you because you're not going to have to be running power from here to this one and then two strappers in between them and then power out. You can literally just run power to one of them and then the output straight to wherever and then you just as the same as this one, you just send two wires from the other switch straight to this switch here, easy done. Like it's it's just the cheapest option, but you do get, get that downgrade of unfortunately only being able to switch it on and off at the one location at any given time. So that's just the kind of different ways you can do it. It's really just comes down to personal preference and what you prefer. But um, yeah, there's just a few things to weigh up. It's one of those things, dual switching, it is quite difficult. Like when I first started my apprenticeship, it's something I probably struggled with for a bit on understanding how it actually works and then getting your head around it. But as soon as you just look at this and then just really look at how the power actually flows through the circuit, it's actually a pretty simple concept. And once you get a, your head around it, it's like anything riding a bike and that as soon as you got it, it's so easy and then you can be able to wire it up yourself. So. So if you're after any more information or some help on how to actually do this yourself, just contact us at info.perthpro.com.au and we'll help you out. Cheers.